welcome to my talk today. Porting legacy service is to Elixir seamlessly. First of all, let me introduce myself again quickly. My name is Yiming Chen. I'm a senior platform engineer working at Tubi. And uh, in my spare time, I often write blog posts about Elixir, software engineering, and other stuff at my blog, yiming.dev. And you may also find my Twitter handle here. So today we are going to talk about legacy code base and the systems. Um, I believe every engineer would all face this kind of situation in their career, refactor or rewrite a legacy system that is supporting a critical workflow for the business right now. To make things harder, no one really knows how this system works from end to end. Everyone is afraid of changing it, not to say adding new features to it. The only, the only best thing we can do in this situation is often to change a variable name to be more descriptive, but that may still break the system apart. And even if it works, it still doesn't move the needle for a bit. We at Tubi started several critical rewrites like this at late 2021. And uh, after being involved in several rewrite projects like this in my career, I think I worked on this one pretty well. The migration went smoothly and no user complaints about the migration so far. In hindsight, making the trend safe was a major principle that helped me a lot. So what does it mean to make the trend safe? In this photo, this person is climbing a cliff and climbing is one of the most dangerous activity in this world. How do climbers make this activity safe? I heard about this report on compact people for climbing you should always move only one of your hands or only one of your feet and keep the other three arms and uh, legs in contact with the mountain. Only by having a stable contact with the ground can we climb completely and uh, stably. <coughs> I believe this same principle applies to software engineering as well, if not more so. So in today's talk, you will see how I designed the migration process at Tubi to make it safe so that we can test in production, learn from our failures, and roll back whenever we need to. First, let's see some background for this migration. If you are not familiar with our product, Tubi is the largest free Able streaming service in North America. We provide more than 40,000 titles to our users for free, and this number is still growing. Our job at Tubi is to make sure every title provides the best experience to every user on every platform. To achieve that, we built a complex content management pipeline since the very beginning of Tubi. We won't dive into too much detail today, but we would focus on one service here, content assessment. If you watch Jose's keynote just now, you will know that video streaming is very complicated and error prone. That's why we need this assessment stage before we make the video content available to the user. During this content assessment stage, our content QA team would review every new title and their processed assets, making sure the assets are in good shape. And they would also pick time marks so we can insert ads at appropriate time and users can skip credit scenes, things like that. The content assessment subsystem was not maintained by any engineers at the end of 2021, 
So we decided to rewrite it with Elixir. The first thing I did for this migration was to analyze its components and summarize each component's responsibility. To serve its purpose, content assessments had this component before our migration. First, a React front-end application and an Express backend server, a MongoDB database, and the Apache Airflow service. The Airflow service would call FM and PAC to detect video scene breaks and also generate sprites images. Then it would write these results into the Mongo database. The Express backend and the React frontend work together to serve these results to our user, Content Ops team. And our Content Ops team would then submit several forms to the Express backend to decide if the asset quality is good to pick time marks for our users. After understanding this current situation, I started defining our goals and the milestones. Keep in mind that one of our top priority is to not break any user-facing behavior. So the first decision we made during this migration was to keep the front-end part the same and to only replace the back-end part first. <coughs> when we started the migration, we've already ported our asset processing pipeline to Elixir. Inside this asset processing pipeline, there is a finding service to detect steam breaks in a video. And there is also a sprite service that generates sprite images from a video. So our end goal looks like this. Build an Elixir of things API that responds to the React frontend with the exact same API spec. And it has its own Postgres database to persist user inputs. And it also integrates with both break finding service and sprite service to serve the uh, video processing results. <coughs> then the question becomes, how do we migrate our architecture seamlessly with few breaking changes to our user's workflow? Because they still use this subsystem <coughs> from day to day. Based on the three point of contact rule, we started our migration by writing a reverse proxy in Elixir. The principle is to only move one hand or one feet and no more. So we first write a reverse proxy, deploy it to production, and we test it manually and to make sure the reverse proxy works. Then we change the API endpoint config in our React app to request this new reverse proxy service instead. If you are curious about the reverse proxy code, it's super easy with the React library. We just pass all the plug call data to the React request function and the React library would handle all the rest. After deploying this reverse proxy to production, we can start porting CRUD features from the Express backend to Phoenix. The idea was to run these CRUD features in parallel while still serving the Express response to the user. <clears throat> and more importantly, we can diff these responses in the dark so we can know if our new implementation is behaving as expected or not. So we build upon the re forward request to function from the reverse proxy version. 
we use a try after block here to make sure we will render the legacy response no matter what. With this safety net, we can put features in any orders we want and do extra things to verify our features are behaving correctly. Inside this tab callback function, we can backfill the data on the fly, apply our own logic, and most importantly, diff our JSON response with the legacy response. Log an error when we find a difference. So we can debug our, without our user even noticing this bug in the new implementation. With this approach, we can discover unknown unknowns early in our migration. These unknown unknowns are one of the biggest challenges when migrating a legacy system. They hide behind the obscure legacy code and surprise us when we find them in production. So by different responses like, in, like this in the dark, we can verify our understanding of the system in production and uncover these unknown unknowns before we migrate away from the legacy system. This safety net allows me to sleep well during the whole migration process. More importantly, having safety net like this allows us to iterate faster. We can put features in any order we want, anytime we want. After deploying feature A to production, for example, we can forget about it for a while and start working on feature B immediately. Even if feature A has some differences from the legacy version, we don't need to hurry to fix it because we are still returning the legacy response to the user. We can finish feature B first or even switch to some other projects for a while if we want. Then come back to fix the bug in this feature A. This freedom and short feedback loop help me stay productive and motivated because I can verify my changes quickly and safely in production. After adding these CRUD features to the new service, we then integrate the brick finding service and the sprites service with it. So the new content assessment service requests not only the existing express backend for video scene bricks and the sprites, but also the new services for it. With all these integrations running stably in production, we can start serving our response. I call this stage partial proxy because before this stage, we still act as a reverse proxy and serve the whole response from the legacy system to our user. Only starting from this stage, we will serve our own responses instead. At code level, we are not only tapping into the legacy response anymore, but also modify it we would merge the legacy response body with our own JSON response. Again, we can still release feature by feature at this stage. For features that are verified with diffing, we can release them quickly. But for features that are hard to verify with diffing, like video scene breaks and uh, sprites, we can release them slowly, communicate with our users, and see if they notice anything different. If anything breaks, we can revert to serving legacy response quickly and fix the issue in the new implementation, then release it again. Finally, after all the features are released, we can backfill all the old data, then stop forwarding requests to the legacy app and the migration is done. That's basically all the steps I took to migrate this legacy service to Elixir and Phoenix. First, inject the new Elixir service in the middle as a reverse proxy. Then put the crowd features to Elixir in the dark and different responses 
to shorten the feedback loops, integrate new services and new backends, and gradually roll out Elixir responses to the user part, to the users part by part. It sounds easy now in hindsight, but we did find a lot of unknown unknowns during this process. And I can imagine how stressful I would be if I didn't take this approach. So my biggest lesson from this migration is to build a safe step setup for ourselves and learn faster with a shorter feedback loop. If I didn't port feature by feature, but to port data layer first, then API layer, I would definitely find, definitely find a hard time when making a switch from the legacy system to the new system. And many times when we migrate a legacy service or even build a new feature in our normal applications, we would run into some one-way doors, decisions that are hard to revert. Most of the time, I believe we can build our own two-way doors to make it a safe and easy to revert decision instead. Just like what I did with the reverse proxy approach. Having these two-way doors behind us, we can move faster and more confidently. Finally, when migrating these legacy systems, we can turn them into our own advantages. If you ask me what's the biggest value of these legacy systems, I'd say they are still running and they are serving our users. So let's take advantage of that. Make the legacy system our safety net, our Oracle, or our experiment control groups. Finally, as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, we have this complex content management pipeline at Tubi. <coughs> now we've migrated asset processing, content service, content assessment to Elixir. They are very scalable and uh, easy to maintain now. And our team is porting the content avail service to Elixir recently. Content avail is the very first step of this pipeline and more complicated than the content assessment service. So we are applying the lessons we learned from the content assessment takeover. So if you are interested in learning a safe and short feedback loop, feel free to reach out. That's basically my talk today. Thank you for joining this talk and uh, uh, being here. You can find me my blog here and also my Twitter handle.